What's up, everybody? Well, I got a, another Asus G15 Advantage video for you guys today. And I had a few people last night, right before I went to bed, tell me that there's a new BIOS out for this thing. So, I figured I would check it out and see if it's any good. But first, why don't we go and get some baselines with 316. That way we can see which one's really better or not. Now, I've just restarted it. It was up... Uh, it was on all night uploading videos to YouTube, so restarted it, gave it like four or five minutes to start off all its background processes. So let's go run Cinebench, Geekbench, and 3D Mark. And then as well as we will check out, uh, what do you call it? Armory Crate little window so you guys can see the fan RPM because I want to make sure they didn't still keep taking away a thousand RPM. Because already, if that's still the case, then as far as I'm concerned, that BIOS is already screwed. But anyway, why don't we go hop into some screen recorded stuff now, and we'll start going through all of the different programs. All right. Let's uh, take a quick look at Cinebench here. We're going to run R23, and we're going to do this single core, multi-core, and then we're going to you know, be able to compare it with all this stuff right here. And I'm going to... Always close OBS every time I run a benchmark. I'm not even gonna let it idle down there. So now let's run the benchmark. So 316 BIOS got us 12,893 for a multi-core. And while that doesn't seem bad, that doesn't seem as high as I used to get. I used to get like 13,000, like right around the dot. But still, we're faster than all these other CPUs here, so that's still not bad. So. Now let's go run the single core and see how that fares. All right, single core is all done running. Takes a little while to run, but we've got 1,422, which doesn't put us quite at the top. 11th gen is still a little bit faster according to this. Now, if I did some like tweaks and whatnot, like I've seen some people in our Discord running, I could probably get that up to at least 1,500 or close. But then it wouldn't be quite apples to apples to people that buy laptops, so I'm Trying to not do that, but anyway, to the next benchmark. Now, real quick, let's run a, a Geekbench 5 here on BIOS 316. Here's all of our processor information, all that whatnot, and we're just going to run the CPU benchmark. We're not going to bother with the uh, GPU compute benchmark. Don't really see the point to that, especially because I'm going to run real games in part two. Anyway, let's go run that. Well, we got 1,475 for single. And then over here for multi, we got 8,502. So, all right. Now, why don't we go ahead and move on? Haven't run this one for a while, but let's run some Passmark performance test here. I got the latest version, 10.2. It is the evaluation version, so I don't know if that, f if that screws me over in any way, but hopefully not. Anyway, why don't we go ahead and move on and do the benchmark well we got 6889 and here's all of our other one 24 375 for cpu 841 for 2d 2133 for 2d 2936 for memory and 16636 for disk mark so this is a get on bios 316 so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, submit that, and let's move on. Now let's go run some 3D Mark. Going to run Fire Strike and Time Spy. Seems to be good, so let's hop in here. Not going to run the demo or nothing, because that just heats shit up for no good reason. And let's go run that benchmark. All right, we got 27,977. So that's cool. There's our graphics score, our physics score, and combined score right there. And my score is at least a teensy tiny bit above average. So that's nice. Didn't beat the best, though. But, hey, you can't always win. I'm sure that's people modifying stuff and doing stuff out of my realm of expertise. Anyway, though, why don't we go ahead and run the next benchmark? All right, time spies all done. We got 11,214. There's our graphic score right there and our CPU score right there. But seems like this time we couldn't quite uh, hit average even. Interesting. But, hey, that's fine. Can't always win. Or even be average. But anyway, why don't we go ahead and move on. Alright, now for this I wanted to show you guys the CPU fan and GPU fan while we're running a Cinebench here. Now on 316, 
the GPU seems to sit around 7,000, and the CPU fan will get up to 7,300 or 7,200, something like that. I think it's 7,200. So just watch that. It's pretty close to maxing out already, but... This is one of the main problems with all the other BIOSes that's come out after 316. They always cut 1,000 RPM away. And then that usually means less performance in games and stuff like 3D Mark and Time Spy and stuff. So we'll have to wait and see with, if 320 does that. But, yeah. Steam doesn't seem to go any higher, so I'm saying 7,200 RPM is the max. So, now why don't we go and install 320 and then come back and run all these tests again. All right, before we started the installation process, I figured I'd just show you guys how to get the new BIOSes for those who don't know. You can just search for this laptop on Google and then go hop on over to support, then go to driver and tools right over here. And then if you wanted driver and tools, you'd go with that, but we want BIOS and firmware. So we're gonna pick the only thing available, which is our laptop. And then if you wanna do it all easy peasy, you can just download the Windows update and then run it like a normal EXE. Just follow the prompts and it'll install. I'm gonna go with this way, with the just general way. So I've downloaded the thing. So now let's go get a USB drive. All right, now we've got our USB drive. I'm just using a super old school one. Technically it's actually the first one I ever got. And if you haven't already formatted it, format it and put it on FAT32. And you can just do a quick format, that's fine. Go hit start and be all done. We've already done that, so I'm not gonna bother with that. So let's just open it up. I've got the old BIOS on there in case this sucks, so I can easily go right back. So just open it up with whatever zip program you're using and then just drag and drop it right onto your drive. And then bam, you're ready to go. So now we can go restart the laptop and start the installation process. Well, all right, we're back after installing BIOS 320. So now we're gonna run Cinebench R23 again. We're gonna do the single and multi cores and then we'll be able to compare it right here. So. Without wasting any more time, let's go run some Cinebench. Well, all right, benchmarks are done. We got 13,082, and I do believe that is slightly better than before. I think we got like 12,886 or something around there before, so that is an improvement at least in Cinebench. So now let's go run the single core and see if that follows suit. Now, single core is all finished. We got 1429, and I do believe that we got 1422 before, so we did improve there as well. Not enough to beat the 11th gen, but whatever still an improvement so i guess let's move on to the next benchmark now it's time to rerun geekbench on bios 320 so here's all the info again for the system information and we're just going to do the cpu not doing the gpu so let's run it all right benchmark so we got 1472 for single and i believe i got 1475 before and we got 8507 multi and i believe we got 8505 before so I'm just going to call that pretty much the same. That didn't really improve one way or the other. So, to the next test. Now to rerun performance test version 10.2 here. And it is the evaluation version, but same as it was before. So, now let's go run that benchmark and see how it fares. All right. Benchmark's all finished. We got 69.13, and I believe we got 68.86 or something like that before. Can't really remember what all those guys were before, but regardless, that is an improvement. So why don't we go ahead and move on? Well, now let's do ourselves some Fire Strike. Oops, that was Fire Strike Extreme. We want Time Spy. There we go. Time Spy and Fire Strike are what we're going to run. So there's also the Speedway at the top all of a sudden. So I guess there's a new version of this out. So let's go hop on into Fire Strike, which is right down here now, and see how it does. All right. Fire Strike's all done. We got 27,698, and I believe we got 27,900 and something before. We're still a little above average here, but still, we lost a little performance too. So, all right, I guess let's go move on over here to our Time Spy and run that. Wow, that's way lower. We got 10,833 this time. I believe before on 316, we got. 10,000, or no, we got 11,200. We weren't quite average, but we were still way better than this. So, all right then. Now I also have an interesting thing. Let's go test out the fan speed. All right now, let's go run some Cinebench here and see if the fan speed still cut or if we're getting our full fan speed. 
All right, since this GPU fan isn't sitting at 7,000 like it was before last time I did this, that's already not boating well. So yeah, I don't know why they did that. They took a bunch of RPM away from both, even more so away from the GPU. Although, I, to be fair, this isn't a GPU test, so it might just not be pushing it hard enough for it to be wanting to go up. But still, you guys saw before, it was doing better before. That's all I can say. So anyway, I also have another thing I want to try. I'm going to go run a little game just to see how the game does temp wise and whatnot but we'll just do that on camera so it doesn't get interfered with so let's go do that all right real quick i wanted to get into a game and just see how it acts in a game compared to how it was running before and i just did this game i haven't launched these videos yet but we are bouncing between 87 and 88 before we were bouncing between 86 and 87 and it never touched 88 even once, not even for a second. And then I noticed the CPU was bouncing mostly between 39 and four gigahertz. Every once in a while I'd drop down to like 38 like this, but it never used to drop down underneath that, down like 37. So I feel like we lost, we might have lost performance, but I don't know for sure. But one would think if we're getting higher temps we're going to get less clocks, wouldn't you guys? That's kind of a shame. All right, let's try to do this bit. All right, but if I jump here, he kills me. Oh, they got me. Well, it looks like I might have to do a part two of this BIOS fiasco. Even though we're getting higher temps and whatnot, for all I know, maybe we're still, for whatever reason, getting better FPS and whatnot in games. So maybe I should pick a couple games, test them, and then drop it back to 316, and then see how it runs those same games. Like, one games with benchmarks and whatnot. That way we can see if the benchmarks change or not. I'm not gonna sit there and play a bunch of games, probably, but we'll just get games with benchmarks like Cyberpunk and Things like that, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, stuff like that. But anyway, let's go wrap this video on up now, shall we? Well, all right, guys. Very inconclusive for the end of this video here, which makes me think I will make a part two where we go and try out some games real quick. Because as you guys saw, a bunch of the benchmarks, we improved. But then when we got to the part where we checked fan speed, where you still are lost out on a thousand FPS or a thousand FPS, a thousand RPM. And that's not cool. And then I decided to throw in a little extra and go and jump into a game. And yeah, I pulled up the same footage I had from that game. And it was bouncing between 86, 87. Now it's going between 87, 88. And keep in mind, that's while it was screen recording with OBS in the background too, so I'm sure that adds some strain to some stuff too, and yet it was still cooler. I was doing camera recording this time around. It was still hotter, but just because it's hotter doesn't necessarily mean that games got worse FPS. For all we know, now they're smoother and get better FPS, just like a lot of the benchmarks improved. Now, except for Time Spy, Time Spy dropped like a rock. We went from 11,200 down to 10,800 and something, so that one, Made, is what made me think, okay, well, maybe games don't run so good, so. I am going to go and download Cyberpunk and Shadow of the Tomb Raider real quick, and I think we'll just do Forza, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Cyberpunk real quick, and do those benchmarks and just see, and then go downgrade back to 316, run the same ones, and see if it's, you know, within the realm of error, or if 316 is still better for gaming, or maybe 
320 is better than 316, even though we lost out on uh, RPM. So I'm gonna go and end this video here and start getting working on part two. So I hope you guys enjoyed, even though it's inconclusive, but hopefully we'll get some more light in it when I get done with part two. But till then, peace out guys.